FPV drones are amazing. I first got interested in FPV when I saw the legend Johnny FPV's video on drifting. He filmed some race cars drifting and I saw that video and first thing that I thought was this isn't real footage, it's from a video game. And then I realized that it was real footage and my mind was blown. I was like, I have to figure out how to get into this because that is amazing. I made the decision about a year ago that I am going to learn FPV. If you talk to anybody in the FPV realm, what they say to newcomers is start on a simulator. I approached FPV like I've approached many things in my life, which was with complete ignorance. So we need a cable or a dongle. I thought, I'm just gonna give this a shot and see if I can figure it out. Random quick play, see what happens. Yeah, it seems pretty on brand. Drone disarmed, move the throttle down to arm. Down to arm. Throttle would be that one. That's throttle. Yeah. All right, oh shit. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing that's not real life. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Okay, so this is the throttle. That's why more goes higher because it's just propeller speeds. Ah, and then you have to hit the tree. <laughs> I spent about an hour, hour and a half on the simulator for my first time just trying to figure out how to keep the drone in the air, trying to figure out how to turn, and trying to figure out how to control altitude. In the first session, I was able to figure out how to turn the drone a little bit and figure out how to go in a straight line. Luckily, with the simulator, you just crash and it restarts, and boy, do you crash. You crash a lot. Oh. 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 Okay, okay. Oh. oh! Up, 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 up. Oh, oh. That was close. Okay. Yeah! After that first session, I did look up some tutorials on what are the drills that a beginner should practice to learn how to fly. I'm up to about three or four hours on the FPV simulator, and I'm actually starting to get the hang of it. I can do figure eight turns, I can do um, a full lap in one of the tracks. I mean, if you've flown a DJI drone, you think, okay, I know how to fly drones, you know, I, I can probably pick this up pretty easy. As soon as you start flying FPV, you realize how much the DJI drones are doing the flying for you. They do almost everything for you. One of the things that I've learned as I've been getting older and as I've learned more and more things is the process of learning something. And when you don't know that process, it makes learning something very intimidating. Once you finally get good at something, you don't necessarily want to feel bad at something again. But if you understand the process of learning is first, there's going to be a long portion where you're not good. You oh. don't have to beat yourself up because you know I'm not supposed to be good at it yet. Close. When I've been flying the simulator in the past, because uh, now I've got, I don't know, 10 or 12 hours, but I would always start with basically a warm up of figure eights or conceptually simple maneuvers, but actually technically kind of difficult. You don't compare yourself to masters in whatever field it is that you're learning. You compare yourself to where you were. You look back and you see the improvement and that improvement is what gives you the positive feeling. It's not that, okay, now I'm an excellent pilot. It's now I'm a better pilot than I was 10 hours ago. Instead of looking at it as I'm not where I want to be. Yes, of course but that's not important right now because in order to get where I want to be, it takes time and effort. I'm not going to get there overnight. That's not how the world works. Instead of feeling disappointed and rushed that I'm not getting there fast enough, what I've learned is to appreciate the process of learning. Then came the time to fly in the real world. And this was something that I was putting off for a very long time because I was afraid of learning how to how to do everything there's there's a lot to learn there's a lot of information you need to learn in order to get a drone in the air and i was just intimidated by that this is first time plugging this in just to see what happens the most put together thing you can get is called a bind and fly drone so a bind and fly drone is a drone that's already built and then you just have to bind it to your remote 
and then it's good to fly. So when I got this little drone, I was told that you're still gonna need to solder in a piece in order to get it to bind to your remote. So just th that, the fact that in order to get a drone ready to fly, you're going to have to solder one piece makes the whole process intimidating. So what I tried to do is I tried to figure out some workaround with the plugs. So I took some cables apart and tried to connect it together without having to do soldering. Instead, 30 minutes later, I found out that that wasn't gonna work. Ah, uh, but now I see we do have a problem. I haven't done any soldering since junior high. I've got this real cheap soldering iron when I was in Tunisia, just so I'd have one. Um, and I mean, it's pretty basic. It's just four pins, although they are pretty small. We'll, <laughs> as is everything, we'll see how it goes. This is also part of understanding the learning process is knowing that everything is more complicated than you think it is whenever you're gonna get into it. I have to change these wires. You know, we look at something and we think it's simple, but as soon as we learn anything about it, we go, oh, this is a lot more complicated than I thought it was. Everything is like that. So part of learning is acknowledging that you don't know everything, but you are capable of learning. Once I got that piece put into the drone, the next thing I had to learn was how to bind the remote to the drone. Each step of getting the drone ready to go fly, I learned that I didn't know how to do any of it. And each step had its own learning curve. So after I got the remote ready to fly, I need to learn how to charge the batteries because you can't just plug in the batteries and charge them. There's things that you need to learn about the batteries and how to charge them because if you don't learn these things, then you run the risk of the batteries catching on fire. So there's a whole learning curve to the batteries. Finally, I can go out and fly. No, I now have to take the drone into beta flight configurator and configure the drone to the remote. <laughs> so that's a whole nother process that I didn't know even existed. Hey. Arm the quad. Armed. Disarmed. And I can see. Oh my god, I can see. Yes. So this whole process from deciding, okay, I'm finally gonna put this receiver into the drone to actually going out and flying was probably close to a week for me. I am ready to fly. When you take a drone out to fly for the first time, it is nerve wracking. Like your heart is racing, you're shaking almost, and it's it's like terrifying almost. I've been flying DJI drones for five or six years. And when I first bought the drone, my first drone was the Phantom 3. It was a mind changing experience for me. I, I bought a drone because I wanted to get cool drone footage. But what I did not expect was to have a psychological shift it's, it's almost like psychedelic in a way. For the most part, you're used to experiencing your body within your own body. And then you see yourself in the mirror and in pictures and then in video and you start to get an understanding of like a third person perspective on who you are. But the drone, there is something about seeing yourself, your whole body looking at you via the drone camera. You're watching it on the monitor live and then flying away from you and up, you know, the very classic drone shot, and seeing yourself get smaller and smaller and disappear into the landscape, something about that changes the way you see the world. And I don't, I don't know exactly how to explain it, but because you're able to see a bird's eye view of everything around you, a much bigger picture live, and that is profound, really. So when I bought a drone, I w wasn't expecting to experience that at all, but that was one of the things that I did experience and I really like about drones. Got it. I mean, I was able to keep it in the air for most of the time until I tried to show off. I'm happy, I'm gonna go back to the boat, charge up the batteries, and hopefully do five packs tomorrow. Let's give this a shot. Understanding the process of learning 
allows me to enjoy the process of learning instead of just wanting to be good at something. It's a great process and it's a lot of fun if you allow yourself to be patient with yourself and to go through the process, trust the process, and enjoy the process of learning. Enjoy the process of being bad at something and getting a little bit better each time. Because one of the things that happens, you see a lot of improvement in the first period of learning, whatever that is, 20 hours, 50 hours, 100 hours, and then you kind of plateau, and then after that, to increase your skills, it's a long, arduous process. So once you get good at something, to get better at it is slower. It takes more effort, and the improvement is incremental and it's a much slower process. So in the beginning, you have to deal with not being good at something, but you get the benefit of seeing a lot of improvement in a relatively small period of time. When you're good at something, you get the benefit of being good at something, but then you don't get the benefit of seeing large amounts of improvement in small periods of time. There's trade-offs to the beginning, and there's trade-offs to being an expert but they both also have their positives. You know, most people would say, well, I'd rather be good at something. Yes, of course, but if you get to a point to where everything you're doing in your life, all the skills you're good at, you get bored because you need a challenge and you need to see that improvement in your life. So then it's very important to pick up a new skill and be a beginner again because then you get that challenge of learning something new as well as that gratification of seeing progress and rapid progress in a small period of time relative to whatever it is you're trying to learn. But of course, it also wouldn't be an FPV experience without getting the drone stuck in a tree. Thanks for watching. See you next time when I try to figure out how to get this drone out of the tree. Oh, I can see it up there.